Well guys, welcome back to the stream. Welcome back to another day, another video, and the final chapter in the tale of two phantoms. That would be the F4B by Tamiya and the F4D by Academy. And of course, building them reversed, um, where the Academy kit was intended to be a Korean plane, the ROKAF, um, and Young to say, oh, you got a boon to all my Korean friends out there. Thanks for all your support. But what we're doing is as you've been watching for 23 episodes now, um, building the Tamiya kit as the Korean plane and building the Academy kit as the American plane. So that's what we've been doing and we finished the Academy kit last time. So now it's just time to finish up the Tamiya kit. So Tamiya kit, of course, looking like this. Now, um, I did wind up, I put on the, the front little cowl piece here on the Tamiya kit yesterday. It was literally the only piece I've encountered on this kit that did not want to fit very well. Um, for whatever reason, just a lot of resistance in trying to get it to sit down in where it's supposed to go and have these panel lines uh, reasonably reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wound up having to just glue it and hold it in place for like a good five minutes. Um, started on this side and once that was finally set, I've, then I worked on this side to squeeze it down and get it in place. I don't know why it was such a resistance piece to, to get it to stay in its little spot, but that's what I encountered and that's the way it is. And then I realized I kind of did it all prematurely because I need to paint this in a flat clear. So I've had to mask that off where the windows are because I don't want to paint flat clear over the glass. So there's a little explanation of what I did yesterday um, just in preparation to get this thing finished. Speaking of finished, all I have to do is put on these little plethora of pieces and we're going to be done. change my glasses because I always do get my glue ready do 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 we're gonna start with the engines okay so I don't think there's any that might there might be a little groove that these lock into well, about just like that so I guess there's lots of little notches along the sides or am I wrong? I'm wrong. I just happened to fluke out and got it lined up almost instantly. There we go. Yeah, so there's these two little notches here and here. I'm going to point with the tip of the wing. Here and here, these two little notches, they kind of go right there. It's almost kind of lines up with this little panel line right there, just like that, which you can't see because I haven't changed my camera yet. So let me change the camera for you. Uh, bing. There we go. Okay. So there's two little notches right there that I'm pointing at with my finger. If I get it in the right light, you can see those. And those line up about right where this panel line is in this division of the white and the camouflage. It lines up right about there and then it slides in. If you don't have that lined up, it doesn't slide in. See? And as soon as I get it there, boink, it fits in. Okay. And because it's Tamiya, it fits perfectly <laughs> and no problem, with the exception of that cowl piece. I don't know why that was such a challenge. It's the first piece that didn't want to really go together for me on this kit. Literally the first piece that didn't want to go. Okay, I'm just going to swirl this around just to make sure I've got glue everywhere on it push that in. There we go. That's engine number one. 
So I'm going to assume this little notch is going to line up on this side too. Yep, bing, just like that. Let's get some glue going all around here. There we go. Okay, engines are finally in. So, let's flip her over. <clears throat> now we can do our ejection seats. These are ready to go in. Okay, as we finished up a few days ago. Now the, these seats have this little notch on the back here for them to fit in. Let's not fit in these two little holes. If I get this angled right, you can see here, this little hole right here, try and angle, right there where I'm pointing, that needs to go into that little slot, and it's the same on the front seat, right in, right in there. So this is the first time I've encountered that on any kit where the seat actually has to fit in a little notch. Um, So we'll see how difficult that is to get in there. It's easy to see where it goes. And there's a little bit of resistance. There we go. Okay. So let's put some glue on that, especially on this notch, this tab, a little bit on the bottom. and get that to slide down in. There we go. So there's that one. Do the same on the pilot seat. I am almost out of glue. The brush is just barely dipping into the tip of the, of the glue. So I'm gonna have to make a trip to my hobby store maybe later today and uh, get some more glue for my next project. Okay, seats are in. There we go. We have a pair of seats in the cockpit. Very nice looking. All right, now with that done, Let's flip her back over and we're going to put our ordnance on. Okay, so we do have definite lefts and right. Again, just like on the Academy kit, we've got this little angle, that little angled piece there. That's going to line up with our landing gear bay. And so, that's not this side, that goes here. And because I have already holes in the bottom of the wing, it's going to locate positively where it needs to be. Unlike my Academy kit, where I forgot to drill the holes, now I want to press down on this just a little bit to get some good contact. One added little thing, there's this little little indent in the wing right here, and the pod actually, the front of it sits down into that, right in there, this little piece here, fits right in there. And there wasn't that, that was not present on the Academy kit. added glue just for good measure so that that is permanent. <clears throat> little test fit for this one. Make sure my holes are big enough and they seem to be pretty good. Good.
Whoops. Come on, get in your hole. There. Push down a little bit. Okay. A little bit of thin on there. Just to make sure it's going to stay. All right. So we've got those. <clears throat> Next, we have some fuel tanks that need to be installed. So turn this around. I want this to be sit level. So okay, let's grab our fuel tanks. Okay, of course, here's our fuel tanks, right there. We'll start with our center line, one, and we'll see how she fits. So, um, the Academy kit just had your two little pins, like this, to go in two little holes, and this one has the same holes, there and there. But the difference between this kit and the Academy kit, we've got a big slot open here in the middle, and we've got a great big tab right here in the middle. So we're going to see how this is going to fit in there. That tab should really help line this puppy up, if I can get it lined up on there. <laughs> Let's find that hole. Yeah, boom, there it just fits right in there. Okay, so my little holes that I've drilled are a little too small. So I'm going to open these up just a little bit. center tank located. Okay, just like that. All right. Next we have our wing mounted tanks. And we're going to have to test fit this. Again, my little holes are not big enough. So, I need to open this up. Be careful not to press down too much because you don't want to go through the wing. There we go. Now, the one thing that's kind of bad about this, I think I got the wrong side, because there's another little hole right there. I believe that's your locator to get this thing straight, and it is, but again, my hole isn't quite big enough, so just a little bit. And there we go. Okay, obviously I'm going to have to hold that in place for a moment 
dries. that one. So I am going to widen these up because I already is going to assume they're too, too small. It seems like I've got a little bit of movement on my wheel there because my shock is not glued into place. And there we go. So, I'm gonna let this sit for just a moment, let that glue cure a little bit before we do anything else. <coughs> Excuse me. And this plane's definitely got a little bit, a little busier going on underneath of it than the American versions, of course, with all the bombs that the American plane did not have. So, yeah. Just making sure everything's sitting where it belongs. At the right angles. Looking pretty good. Okay. Assuming that's cured enough, I'll try and flip her over. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared to flip it over. So let's just give it another minute. Okay. Just give it another minute. I don't want to, I don't want to rush. So what I can do is clean up a couple of things that I'm not going to need. Little rod pieces that are not necessary. One thing I was thinking of doing is on the American plane is adding these little pods for the fuel tanks so that the they're actually there on the wings, but um, no tank itself, because the tanks have the pods molded onto them already. So I was thinking, yeah, I could do that, because the Tamiya kit comes with these extra ones if you wanted to just have blanks sitting there, which is a nice little option. So I'm still debating on it. I might just say, yeah, you know what? It's good enough, and that just might be the case. So yeah. Um, we'll see how it goes. Let me check something here. Okay, yeah. <coughs> okay, so I think that's long enough. Let's flip her over. There we go. Okay. 
now that this is going to be on his feet all the time, let's get this long-awaited tail fin put on. It's been sitting for so long, waiting so patiently to actually be put on the plane. I already know it's going to fit because I've put it on this thing multiple times as a test fit. So, I already know it's going to fit. Let's pick it up gently, fit it on there, press her down into place. Just like that. And unlike the Academy kit, it's already perfectly straight up and down and it fits. There's no wobbling or anything. So that's already a huge improvement. Okay, next. We gotta put our tail fins back on that I broke in half by mistake. These are supposed to be one piece sitting like this, okay? Um, but while I was doing all my stuff, I wound up breaking it. So, yeah, it is what it is. I'm going to try and I'll just put glue on these two tips and put it in and hope that they stay together and uh, they don't glue permanently in there. Um, it is a little bit of a challenge to keep it in there like that. But I'm going to try and see how it goes. the glue on that one. Let's get it in there. Hopefully not too much. Okay. Turn it around. Just for good measure. Little dabs on these ones. not really doing anything. Now we have these little pieces that need to go in. And which side they go on, I don't remember. I think it goes like this. upside down. Come on. There we go. Okay, where'd that thing go? Where did you fall? down there so I can see this thing. See where it fell. So my wings, they're not really cooperating very much. There we go. All right. Tail fins are on. Or real at rear elevators. Hey man, is that an F4? Yes, it is. Seize them off. It is an F4 Phantom. almost finished almost done so now with the tail tail fins on um, I need to add this little tiny fin that came off a long time ago it's this guy here 
that I just dropped and is gone now. So I'm not adding that little fin because that's now. Uh, yeah, thank you, fire engine. How did you make it? Well, I bought the kit. Um, as you can see right over here, that's what the box art looks like. You buy the kit from Tamiya, comes with about 150, 250 parts, and you assemble it all with a little bit of glue. Yeah. So, what I need to do now, before I put the canopy on, I need to paint this in a flat clear. So, using Tamiya's TS80 flat clear, we're going to give it a flat coat, flat coat, and uh, get that all filled up and uh, looking a little more realistic because it shouldn't be super shiny like this. So, <clears throat> do the bottom first here. these things or is it just more of an occasional hobby it's <clears throat> kind of a bit of both I guess um, I do collect them um, because it is a hobby <laughs> um, bit of both worlds right um, I'll just change my camera here while we're waiting <clears throat> yeah it's you know I build these things all the time and uh, yeah when I'm done I do keep them so I do kind of collect them at the same time right so yeah paint's getting a little tacky already so we'll just give that a minute and that will be dry to the touch in a minute or so and then it won't look so super glossy I did I didn't I kind of made sure not to go in these metallic areas because I want those to still be shiny you don't want to map those out and it looks kind of weird um, yeah so <coughs> We are pretty much done with that. It's a little bit, just a little bit tacky still, so just give it another minute before really doing anything. Do you have Discord? I, I don't think I have my Discord set up. <laughs> um, it's one of those things, I know, you know I do, I do have Discord. I just haven't been on it in months. Um, yeah. So, there might be links to my Discord on my Twitch page, but I'm not sure. I normally do stuff like I upload pictures of all my models on my Instagram. So you can check out my Instagram, there's links down below there. You can check out my Instagram if you want and uh, see still pictures of basically everything that I've made in the last couple of years. Um, yeah. So I think this is good to go now. It's still a tiny bit shiny as you can tell. It's still got a bit of a sheen on it. So I'm going to give it another coat of the flat. Okay. I'm going to give it another coat of the flat. Just on top. It's just still a little too shiny. Shiny now because the paint is wet, so we're gonna have 
to give that a minute before I start really playing around with it. I can unmask this now because I'm done painting. So, yeah. All right. Get that taken off there. sell brand logos actually if you're interested you can help me out well send me a DM on my Instagram and um, send me some examples of what you do and uh, we'll go from there how about that or actually I think my DMs are open on my on my twitch also so you can also ch try that too Okay, as this paint is starting to dry now, it's a little bit flatter and that sheen is kind of going away, which is what we want. So, we're going to start with our canopies, and this one is going to go in right here, just like that. And that, of course, is a really nice, perfect fit. So, let's put some glue on that. to follow you on Instagram. Well, thank you very much. That's awesome. I also have a YouTube channel if you want to check out that um, where I upload all of my builds onto my YouTube channel. And hit that like and hit subscribe. <laughs> all right. There we go. I think I'm going to use a little bit of the extra thin just to ensure that that's going to be holding. And then we have our rear canopy, which goes onto this piece here, and our shock goes into the back, into that little hole, which I just kind of broke the shock a little bit here. so. much. It's greatly appreciated. Getting that shock lined up in the hole is a little harder than expected. You know, test fitting this a few days ago, this was a lot easier. doesn't want to work. Get in there, you little piece of crap. There. So our canopy's on, just need to do that, okay. Suddenly it decided to move. thing. Is our paint dry? It's dry. I need to turn this around.
because we have to install the little ladder. Let's see, can you make a warhead next time? A warhead? What's a warhead? You mean like an actual warhead on a on the end of a the head of a missile? Like that kind of warhead? <laughs> I don't think I can do that. <laughs> a nuclear warhead. Ah, oh, yeah. Um yeah, I don't know how to build one of those, so I don't think I could show you. <laughs> Okay, so we have our little ladder piece, and it has to go right on the edge, on the side here. Let me change the camera. I'll show you. Okay, so it needs to go into this little slot right here. Okay, and that's what we're gonna do next. I test fit this the other day to make sure it's going to fit and not really give me any headaches. So in theory, this should go in fairly easy. A little bit of glue just on the tip. And slot that in. Just like that. Get it in. I don't have any Q-tips out. Get a little bit of extra glue. I'm just gonna clean that off. There we go. So our ladder's in. Just like that. And that, my friends, concludes. The Tamiya F4 Phantom. The only final thing I need to do is add some black soot onto the underside at the back to get that nice dirty look from the engine exhaust. Do that this pigment, like I did on the Academy kit. Just get it on your brush like that. I get my paper towel out because this stuff is messy. And drops everywhere on you. Okay. And just kind of stipple it on there to give it our dirty little look. Bit more. And we'll start on this side. It's just like a black powder. Gives it that dirty, dirty, dirty look. We'll do a little bit on the wings too to get them looking a little sooty. Just like this. Get that exhaust look. Okay, just a dumb cut. Do you, uh, do you plan to make an actual jet design for military? You don't have to answer that. <laughs> no, that's a that's a military secret. I'm not I'm not allowed to say anything. <laughs> but um, realistically, no. Um, I just build the model kits. That's <laughs> that's all I do. All right. So there's our black soot look on there. And that's all we need to do for that. And now, just blow away some of the residue. And that is now finished. That is all done. All finished. Oh, thank you very much. All done. So I need to clean my brush off because that pigment will stain and if I try and use the brush for anything else. This is just regular old lacquer thinner. 
that I use for cleaning my brushes. Just a little bit in there, wipe it off. And that's good enough. That brush is clean. And so there we have it. There's our F4 Phantom, the Tamiya version. All done. I've got pigment on my fingers. All done, all finished. And of course, there's all our missiles and bombs on the underside and fuel tanks. And uh, yeah, fun stuff. All finished. So what I'm going to do next is I need to take some pictures of this guy and I'll take pictures of the Academy version, have them side by side so you can see the differences in what they look like and all that stuff because the Academy version does look a lot different. It doesn't have the, the uh, camouflage scheme. It's got the American scheme similar to this one right here, but that's the... Uh, I did the Jolly Rogers version of that plane, so it's got the skull and crossbones on the tail fin and all that stuff. So, this is where I'm going to leave it because this project is finished. And, um, yes, it's been a long time coming. It's over 24 hours working on both of these planes. Not at the same time, obviously, but, um, yeah, 24 different episodes of roughly one hour each working on these two planes. They both came out looking really good. The Tamiya kit obviously was a lot easier to assemble and a lot less headaches, less putty to use, if any. I don't think I used any putty on the Tamiya kit. And they both look good. And um, yeah, I I am impressed with the, the fit of the Tamiya for sure. It's a lot easier to build, less headaches, all that good stuff. Um, I am happy with the the implementation of the wing tips on the uh, Academy kit from the Tamiya. That was a good, nice way to go with that one with the wings folded up. But yeah, um, I think this looks really great. It looks pretty cool and it's going to be a nice new addition to my shelf. Um, so I got to take pictures of both planes and I'll upload them on my Instagram so you guys can see at all different angles and all that kind of stuff and the comparison between the two. And that is about where I'm going to end it for today. And um, yeah, maybe in the next couple of days um, I'll probably work on a Gundam. I still have two Gundam kits to build. Um, and I know that a lot of my followers on YouTube, you guys don't like watching my Gundam builds, but that's okay. I only got two more to build, and then I won't be doing the Gundams anymore. Um, there'll be more tanks, and I got a couple of cars to build. Um, but mostly airplanes. Uh, yeah. So, um, I want to thank you guys for a lot watching and, and thanks for the chat. And uh, that was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for today. And uh, we'll see you all in the next one.